is up everyone and welcome to Robitech. Last week we dealt with everyone's burning question about what the best PC for $500 is. We walked through the parts, told you our reasoning and sent it out to the wilds of the internet. However, we are not done yet. No, 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 no. We don't just recommend a PC full of parts and call it a day, do we, Brian? No. Do we, Josh? No. That's right. We got everybody here. I'm pretty excited. We're going to build it. We're going to test it. And we're going to see how our recommendations actually hold up. Just like I anticipated, it isn't easy choosing a $500 PC. And we had a lot of comments on the build when we put it out there. It's not like I wasn't expecting to get a lot of comments. I mean, this is YouTube, however. And of course, you guys know more than I do, and I'm okay with that. But I wanted to walk us through the parts again today and I'll try to address some of those comments because I did have reasonings and I felt they were important. So today it's not just about rehashing what we did in last week's video, it's also about building it, getting it up and running, and playing some games to see how this little beast is going to perform. A couple of the same caveats. First, this is not made to look pretty. Now here we are optimizing for power regardless of how it looks and I'm throwing in some cable extensions to make sure it looks good for B-roll because even though this isn't one of our killer builds, there's only so much I'm willing to sacrifice. But remember the uh, cable extensions are optional. You do not have to put them in, but we gotta make it look good. You know what I'm saying? The CPU and GPU were the most critical components here with the GPU being the most important. So we had to sacrifice across the other parts including looks to get the best PC for the $500 price. Second, Prices change, and at the time of our origi original filming, it came in at just over $500. In fact, when I rechecked on all the prices after we released the video, it had actually jumped by $40, and a lot of the parts had quickly gone out of stock. Now, I've added additional links in the, stock the description below, but these are volatile times, and I just can't promise where prices are gonna be on a week-to-week -week basis. Now, like I had stated in the previous video, this isn't like my Cornerstone $1,000 build, which is made to be upgraded and includes all the latest and greatest tech like PCIe Gen 4 from AMD and NVIDIA. When you get to $500, a lot of that goes out the window because here it is about maximizing the power per dollar across generations of components, not just using X570 in the latest gear. Fundamentally, outside of replacing the GPU or even the CPU, to bolster the brawn of this PC, you aren't gonna see PCIe Gen 4 or USB 3.2 Gen 2x2 here because you just cannot do that at this price point. This means that if, and I do emphasize if there is support for PCIe Gen 4 3000 series NVIDIA or RDNA 2 cards from AMD, you aren't gonna be able to use this build recommendation to unlock that potential. In fact, you would be hard pressed at this price point to find anything like that. Now that's not to say you can't unlock a lot of potential when upgrading this PC, but it has a limits compared to my 1K PC, which you can check out here, which gives you the ability to adopt all the latest architecture from AMD and NVIDIA. Now this build will give you great high FPS gaming, and will run games at 1080p at greater than 100 frames per second with the ability to modify settings to run at 1440p or 4K if you adjust the settings to work with those resolutions. This is no gaming beast of a PC. There's going to have to be some compromises in graphical facility. Fidelity. 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 To get some frame rates you want. It's no slouch either, don't get me wrong, and it will more than scratch that PC gaming itch aplenty and do it well. Now, by the way, I will be updating these guys on a three month basis and trying to keep you up to date on what to buy in the $500, $1,000 and $2,000 price point if it changes that much. So you need to be sure to slap that subscribe button, whip that like button and ring that notification bell so you get a notification each and every time we post a new video here to keep you in the know. Also, we will have updated links to all the parts in the description below. So if you wanna pick up the build, just head on down there and add them to your cart. Now, let's go over the parts in the build again. So for CPU, I chose the six core 12 thread Ryzen 5 1600 AF. This is the 12 nanometer refresh of the 14 nanometer Ryzen 5 1600. Performance wise though, this thing does not perform like a Ryzen 5 1600, but is actually in some cases outperforming the Ryzen 5 2600. Now this was available for $85 over on Amazon and at 99 over at Newegg versus the $120 plus Ryzen 5 2600, which is a steal. Now it has been going out of stock here and there over the past week. So just keep your eyes peeled as this has been a very popular CPU. I know some people did ask and frankly, you just can't get an equivalent Intel offering that also includes a cooler for the same price. That's not to say for gaming, you wouldn't benefit from like an i5-7600K, but there are literally twice the price with no cooler, making it hard to get into a $500 build. The cheapest Intel CPU I could find was the i3-8100 for close to that price. And that just wasn't realistic to recommend given the performance versus a 1600 AF. For motherboard, I chose the ASRock B450M HDV R4. 
What a fun name. I hope I'm, I'm gonna call my next kid that. Hello, Azrock B450 of HDR4. I mean, can you imagine the teacher? How do you spell that? The R4 of the Azrock board is Ryzen 3000 ready and doesn't need a BIOS upgrade if you wanna throw in a 3600X or 3800X at a later point. No real feedback on this, so it looks like people understood my reasoning, which is great. Gonna keep it there. For GPU, I chose the Asus GeForce GTX 1650 Super Overclocked 4 gigabyte Phoenix Fan Edition. Man, it just sounds like, like so many words together. It's like it's like reading a wrestling team. Again, this is a great card for 1080p gaming. And when you look at the benchmarks for this card, you can easily get to 100 FPS without sacrificing too much with a game from a game visual standpoint within reason. Now I went through my reasonings on why not AMD and it simply came down to price. For equivalent price and drive stability, there isn't a good AMD card to recommend, even at the 590 or 580. For RAM, I chose Team T-Force Vulcan Z 16 gig, two by eight gig dim of DDR4 3200 megahertz RAM. This gives you the additional speed should you decide to upgrade to a 3000 series Ryzen in the future. And because the 1600 AF does have the improved IMC of the 2600, 3200 megahertz should be no issue. But we will, and I emphasize we will test it. For storage, I went with the Team Group T-Force Vulcan 2.5 inch, 250 gigabyte SATA 3 SSD. Now, I got a ton of feedback on this and I wanted to make some recommendations for other options if 250 gigabytes is too small, which I agree is not a lot of space. You can also choose a one terabyte Fire CUDA 7200 RPM hybrid SSHD. Now you will sacrifice load times to some degree, but again, a lot of additional space. Ideally, I would pair this plus a 250 gigabyte SSD and know that adding an extra $60 to the cost if you add it in addition to, or about 15 bucks if you replace the T-Force SSD. For the sake of this video, I will show you how to install it in a mechanical drive in case you want to do the same. For the power supply, I needed 500 watts or greater. Price was definitely a factor, so I went with a Thermaltake Smart Series 500 watt. It's a 80 plus certified and it meets the minimum bar. I've used a Thermaltake before and I've never had an issue with a PSU. It's not modular and it's not gonna win any beauty pageants, but it does give you the power you need to get it at 85% efficiency. Looks like folks agreed, so we'll just continue to move forward with this. For case, I selected the Cooler Master Masterbox Q300L Micro ATX Tower. Now it's a nice, small, compact case, supports all the components I selected, and it gives us the room for a full ATX power supply. Given its price at only $49, it's an incredible value. Seriously, I can't believe this case is as cheap, and it gets plenty of airflow options, supporting up to a 240 millimeter AIO if you do decide to upgrade to a 3000 series Ryzen later. And with two USB 3 on the front, which is uniquely placed on the side, or actually can be placed anywhere on the front panel, which is crazy. Also, as a bonus, it has plenty of room for cable management and where you place the parts is pretty straightforward. I know we talked about cheaper cases, but I cannot say how much easier and more enjoyable this case will be to build in versus the less expensive option. Now guys, that's it. That's a $500 PC and we're gonna build it and test it and show it here today. So let's get started. Okay, so what is it that you need to build this build? Now, first and foremost, you need a nice clean surface. I also, I always like to show this, where is it? There it is. I always like to show this, but if you're worried about anti-static, and some people are, you can always look at this iFixit kit, which is down in the description below, and you can use one of these. These are anti-static wristbands. This is not like the Verge, where this is just a Armstrong wristband. This is actually a real anti-static wristband. If you're worried about this, what you do is you basically put it over your wrist. If you take your PSU, you plug it in, and you put this on the metal fan top part, you'll actually be statically protected and you can put it on your wrist or you can put it on your ankle down below. Given what we have in terms of flooring and stuff, I don't have to worry about that, but I always like to show people what it actually takes to be able to do something like that. Let's talk about what else you need. You're going to need a screwdriver. I have a couple here. Uh, this is a Phillips head magnetic screwdriver. This has been around since like circa Windows, uh, I think it's Windows Media Series 9, which is like Windows XP. <laughs> So this is a very old screwdriver, but still a absolutely awesome screwdriver. Uh, number two Phillips is the ideal set. You can always use something like this as well. This is the iFixit kit that um, that other part is part of it. Again, it has a ton of different heads. These are really great kits, especially if you're gonna get into PC building full time, or you can use them for things like fixing iPads and stuff like that. But you'll need a uh, screwdriver kit like this. And then something, the other thing I like about this is it also has a place to put your screws. These are zip ties. 
or as The Verge calls them, tweezers. Um, these zip ties uh, are just always a great thing to basically have. So we're, we use zip ties. Uh, we have wire cutters that actually allow me to cut the zip ties. That's why I have wire cutters. You don't need it for this build, but it's always good to have it on hand. This is thermal paste. <coughs> Ow. Into your elbow, uh. but not into your hand. <laughs> I'm gonna go wash my hands here in a minute. <laughs> thermal paste. Uh, thermal paste, you just wanna have it on hand. So there's your thermal paste and you're ready to go with that. And then finally, a knife. You're gonna be opening a lot of packages. It's always good to be safe. Remember, knife safety. Just don't throw it at your friends like this. That's like a dangerous thing. You wanna basically be good there. So yeah. That's not a knife. That's not a knife. Yeah, I need to get, I think I need to follow like the iJustine thing and get like a super massive like machete or something like that. Cause I feel like, I feel super inadequate after watching everybody else open there with like some sort of super awesome knife and I have a lame knife. Anyway guys, that's what's going on. That's all you need to build this build. You should be good using these parts. Okay, I'm gonna go wash my hands. No, I did. I sang the whole happy birthday song the entire time. Twice. Twice. I know. I made sure. We're safe. <laughs> <laughs> now, what are we going to do first? Well, we're going to prepare the motherboard. And this is what you need to do to prepare the motherboard for this $500 PC of awesome. Let's just talk quickly. Let's talk about the different components you see on this board. This is your socket AM4. It's actually appropriately labeled socket AM4. This is actually where we're going to put putting our CPU. This are your RAM slots. Now, this is a micro ATX board. So you might be looking at, if you were looking at my 1K build or even the H1 build, you can see some actually have four slots, some have two. This actually only has two slots because this is a micro ATX and the most RAM we could put in here is two actual DIMMs. This is your uh, ATX power, your 24 pin ATX power supply. This is USB 3. These are your SATA connections. This is actually your B450 chip. This is where we're gonna stick in our PCIe 16. This is where we're gonna be sticking in our graphics card. These are our brackets for installing things like our cooler, which we'll show a little bit later. And then of course, this is your rear IO uh, here on the back. So that's just kind of a quick overview. We have some other things here, like for instance, we have HD audio. We have things like USB. Um, we have our front panel connectors. These right here are fan headers. If, as we talk about each one of these parts, we'll make sure that we point them out to you. It's very clear what you have to do when we're actually using this different parts of the board. So we've talked about the motherboard. What are these other components that I have here on the table? This right here, this is your stock cooler that actually comes with your 1600 AF. So we're gonna be using that. As you can see, it actually has thermal paste pre-applied. You can see that actually right here. I'm not going to touch it. If you do touch it, I would suggest wiping it off with isopropyl, isopropyl alcohol and then reapplying your own thermal paste if you have some. So if you don't, try not to touch it. Over here, we've got, these are our RAM DIMMs. You can see these little holes right here on the, uh, uh, these little slots right here. We'll talk a little bit about those here in a few minutes. This is actually your CPU. So as you can see right here, you got your Ryzen 5 1600 AF right here. So that's what we're gonna be putting for our CPU. We also have, um, this is your rear IO and these things are all inside of your motherboard box. So this is included in your box. All of these components you have here, as long as you take these out, these are in all the boxes that you've included. These are the parts you're gonna need. This is the rear IO. Make sure we do not forget to install this. These are your SATA cables. These are gonna be used for hooking up your physical drives like your SSD. And we're also gonna put in a physical, typical hard drive as well. So we can just show how to do that. The other thing that we're gonna to add to this build just so we can show it so you get kind of like a comprehensive is we're gonna go ahead and add a uh, M.2 drive. Again, this is not because we're gonna use this for testing. I just wanted to be more comprehensive within, with doing this build. So if you did do an upgrade, like add an M.2 or add a physical drive, we showed you how to actually do that. So I'm just trying to be comprehensive with this overall guide, trying to make it a little bit better for you guys. Let me know in the comments below if this is something that you actually enjoy, um, regardless of whether it's included in the build or not. So we're gonna show you how to install that. In order to install an M.2 drive, you need this little bad boy right here. And I love to zoom in on these. And you, got, you need this little bad boy right here, this little tiny M.2 screw. This little screw is super important in terms of installing our M.2 drive. So let's get started and let's get the CPU installed first. Here we go. Ryzen 5 1600 AF, should kind of pop out nicely. Now here's the thing about these CPUs. 
There are two parts of this. This is top part is called the IHS, and on the bottom is pins. You wanna try very hard not to touch the top on the IHS, and you wanna also not touch the pins on the bottom. Now, we're gonna show you, and we've shown this on multiple videos before, you see the super tiny little gold arrow right here? This is actually where you're going to basically line up to install it in your AM4 slot. That little tiny arrow is gonna go on top of that little tiny arrow. Take this little arm, open it up like so, Take this and you can see the two arrows. They're gonna go right on top of each other and it drops in just like that, very simple. It's okay to just kind of shake it to make sure it's in. And then once you kind of know it's in, you can pull that down and boom, your CPU is installed. So now we're going to install our RAM. When you basically install RAM, there's two little brackets. This one has sometimes both move, sometimes only one moves. In this case, it's only gonna be the top ones. So you wanna unclip both of these. This one doesn't have that. What you wanna do is you would look right here, you'll see a little slot, and you wanna line it up with this little slot here on the board. So you take this and you line it in just like that. So it just goes in like so. And you just slide it right in and you wanna make sure it gets a nice solid click. There you go, there's one. Same thing. You hear it, it sounds so good. Nice solid clicks just like that. Okay, next up, we're gonna show you how to install your M.2 drive. If you went ahead and got one of these for this build, this is actually where you're gonna install where it says Ultra M.2, this is actually where your M.2 is. Here you'll see 22, 40, 60, and 80. This is the size of the M.2. 99% of M.2s are 80 millimeters in length. The way this is gonna work is you're gonna take your little M.2, again, trying not to touch it on the top, taking it very notch to the top. Now right here, if you look at this, Again, there's a little slot right here, and there's a little slot right here. You just wanna slide that up, like so. Push it in. And then just, then you can see, like it, it's like a, it's like a, it's like a diving board. Nice and bounced. Then you're gonna take your little tiny screw, put it right down like that, and screw it down. And just wanna go until it stops. You don't wanna to push too hard, just till it stops, and then your M.2 is in. So the last part of this is installing your stock cooler. For your stock cooler, you're gonna to need to remove the brackets. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take off this bracket. This isn't like the other like newer race stock coolers. We can just put it on top of this. So we're gonna take off this bracket like so. There's gonna be four screws. Now you gotta be super careful with this because after you take off the screws, there's a back plate on here. You just wanna be cognizant of because it can slip off. So just once you kind of have it done, there you go, like that. Let's take that off, there's one. It's always a good idea, by the way, words of wisdom from Robitech, keep these brackets. You're gonna to wanna to keep these brackets because if you ever go to an AIO or if you ever go to certain, there are certain things that actually still use that. Oh, I didn't drop it. Okay, so what you're gonna do is you're just gonna line up these holes with the little holes on the bracket like so. You're just gonna kind of screw them in. And what you wanna do is in kind of a star pattern. So once you kind of get it started, then go to the bottom right one, like that. Then go to the left one, top right. And just keep screwing until it stops. You just wanna keep going in like a star pattern. Don't worry, that sound is normal. There you go. And then the last part you're gonna do is up here in the top, See right here where it says CPU fan? Then what you're gonna do is take this, there's a little notch, and you see this little plastic piece right here. You see that? Just gonna take this, just put it right like that. And there you go, motherboard is prepped. So let's talk about this absolutely stunning case. Uh, we're gonna prep it, but I, I just wanna, I wanna walk you guys through a little bit of this. So again, for 50 bucks, this case, so it's got all of the things here are just basically magnetic. It's got magnetic dust filters. They have a cool pattern, which if you watched our uh, Cooler Master build that we gave away, Josh actually used this pattern when we did the case design. Very, very cool here. They're all magnetic. They just pop on really nicely. Um, we'll look at some thermals probably at some point in time, not in this video, but we'll check that out. We'll let you know what the, these do in terms of restricting airflow. So we're gonna take those off. There's one there on the side, on one on the top. Grab this one over here on the side. I mean, on the front. Now, the other thing too that I thought was pretty neat, I just, again, continue to be improved with this, impressed with this case, is these are actually rubber. 
So you don't, like, you know how a lot of people look at this and you think, oh, the tower can get set up like this. You can put this down on your desk, like so, and not have it like move or anything like that. So we, that, I think that's incredibly cool. Um, we're gonna go ahead and remove the front panel. If you see this right here, this is actually your front panel IO. You can switch this direction any way you want. So when we take this off, if you wanted to have the front panel up here, or if you wanted to have the, this over here, you can actually move this around. It's completely movable. So you have some options in terms of that. Again, just impressed with what you get for $50. So I'm gonna take this off. And that's why, you know, it's funny when I was talking about my suggestions here, if you're gonna, if you're gonna build in a case and you're gonna limit your limit the amount of money. This is a very easy case to build in, and it just has so many options. So taking this off, like so. And then again, this is, and by the way, this is not glass, this is not tempered glass, so this is actually um, a plastic, so like an acrylic plastic. So just bear that in mind. You don't have to worry about it breaking either. Now again, this little piece that you have here, you see there's two screws here. And then what you can do is you can see they're perfectly placed on each part. You can just move this to here, you can move it to here, or you can move it to here. Okay, so we got that ready. Now we're gonna do just to continue prepping the case. So we're gonna go and take this part back here off. This is just to make sure that we have enough room and it's easy for us to put in our graphics card. So this is a, this basically just puts a shield in place so we can get to this. There we go. So now we can get these out. And then the last thing we're going to do, and this is the other part I was super impressed with this case, I'm gonna take off the back here. These are whole rubber feet, by the way, they come out. Just be aware. Come out like that. You just wanna make sure you have the back panel off. And this is just basically making sure if you take all the panels off, you're just gonna be better prepared to do the installation. And I, again, you have a good, almost three quarter of an inch in terms of how much space you have to store cables back here. So. A, like one of the things that I think a lot of people struggle with when you get little inexpensive cases is like having this kind of room in the back becomes problematic, right? And so in this case, you have plenty of room if this is your first time cable managing, it's easy to do here in this case. You also have at the bottom, you actually have another, you have another dust filter that you can take off. I don't wanna take it off, but there is a dust filter down here. Now that we have that all set, we are actually, the case itself is prepared and incredibly light. Last thing I'm gonna do, is inside here. This comes with like your extra supplies. So supplies wise, so we got some, as the Verge calls them, tweezers, <laughs> uh, some zip ties, and then you've got some rubber grommets for installing drives. And then again, these are your screws for installing your motherboard and uh, putting additional standoffs in if you wanted to. So we wanna save these and we'll talk about when we get ready to go to the next step, which is putting this thing together, what you're gonna need out of here to get ready for that. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're actually going to install our hard drives because before we kind of get too, too far inside of this, it's just a little bit easier. We have options in terms of where we're gonna do our hard drives. Right in there, it's, it's plainly labeled, it says HDD. This is going to be where we're going to be putting our mechanical drive, which again, we wanted to show you each part of this. This wasn't included in the build, but we wanted to show you this is a six terabyte Seagate Barracuda. This is a big beefy drive, but we're gonna go and put this in here just to show you how to do it. Over here on the left, you actually have two places to install what are called SSDs. So this is the part that's included. This is your Vulcan. Again, very pretty looking uh, uh, SSD here. You can see like kind of the shine and you can install those either up here or up here. And you have the option, we're gonna actually have the option of putting it in the front or you can actually put it in the back depending on what you prefer. And they go like this is basically the way they go either there or there. We're actually gonna put ours in the front just to make it look nice. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna install our hard drive. So just take your thumb screw like so. And then you know, I basically want my cables to come out this way. So I'm gonna take my drive. You basically want your SATA power and your SATA data off to the right. Now, you'll see these holes. You wanna basically push them as far to the left as possible. So you have a lot sticking out on the right-hand side. The screws that I showed you, these are the ones you're gonna to wanna to use. Line those up like so. I do a corner at a time, it's just a little bit easier and then it keeps it from like slipping versus like doing next to each other. Little, little tip, there you go. And ba-doom. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna see these little slots right here. And there's little slots right here inside of the case. Just slip those little slots into there like so. I'm gonna push it down and screw it down. And just like that, our super beefy boy hard drive is ready to go. 
So there's that hard drive. So what we're gonna do right here is you're gonna take your, this is your Team Force hard drive. You're gonna stick these like this. Then you're gonna take these little rubber grommets. You're gonna put them on each corner. You're gonna want the little nipple up. You're gonna screw these in. Now you don't, you don't wanna screw them too tight. You just wanna screw them down tight enough. You're gonna screw them into all four corners. And the screw you're gonna need is gonna look just like this. You can see it's got little threads at the bottom and then it's clear at the top. Don't tighten them too much, just tighten them like kind of finger tight. Same thing. Then you're going to kind of set this off to the side. Grab your case, take your SSD. You can see there's four holes right here. It's gonna reach underneath and you'll be able to kind of see them slip through. Just push it in just like that. And you tighten the rest of your screws. And now you'll know, you'll feel like when you feel tension, like you feel like it's pushing against you, it's kind of when you stop screwing. Good to go. Next up, take these, just kind of push them down here for now. Because we'll need these later on. And then we're gonna put in our motherboard. So for motherboard, first thing we're gonna do is this is your IO shield. You wanna open this up. You can see it says up here at the top, like you can tell what the top is because it's like, it's all clear up here. So this is the top. This is the bottom, you wanna put it like this. What you're gonna do is you're gonna stick it in just like that. You're gonna press on each corner. Make sure it clicks into place. And sometimes it will fight you. It's okay. There it goes. Now, just like that. There we go. One of the things about this case is you, though you have, we are using micro ATX, it did not install all of the required standoffs. These are what you're gonna need right here. You'll need three of them. So these are your standoffs. They have threads at the bottom and they look hexagonal. And then you also need this. This is your standoff tightener. What this does is this goes over the standoff. So you basically stick the standoff in like that once we're gonna tighten it down. So you'll see there's one here. It says M next to it. You're gonna install one right here for micro ATX. It says micro, micro ATX. It's funny, I just wanna kind of Screw it in. There's gonna be another one way over here. It says M. They're all labeled with M. It's not, you're not gonna put them in all the same places as M, but you're gonna basically put them in here. And then there's another one in the top left corner. Then you're gonna take your standoff screw header, put it on like that and put it over it and then tighten these down. Put that one in the top corner. Now we grab our motherboard. Kind of shove it in like so. And push it in right in like that. So I'll go like this. Just like that. For those of you who are looking for the screws, they were there, there, there. And there. Undo this real quick. This is your one fan, your your fan for pulling out air. Again, there's no there's outside of the air being blown out of the fan, which you may need additional ones. This is the only fan header you have to hook up. Take this little thing. You can see it's got a little little black like teeth. Just lines up right here on the left. I'm just gonna push it in just like that. There you go. Fan header is connected. Next up, we're gonna hook up our USB 3.0. Go ahead and pull these through. See these right here? Put them into this big hole right here. Like this. There you go. Like that. For USB 3.0, there's a little nipple right here. And right down here, you'll see a little hole. That little nipple goes in that little hole, like so. So you just turn it on and push it in just like that. And there's our USB 3. Now for HD audio, this one goes way over here in the corner like this. You can actually see it's got a missing, see that missing thing? There's also a missing pin over here. Line it up just like that and push it in just like that. So there's our HD audio. So you're gonna wanna set your hard drive and reset switch like this in your hand. I'm gonna put them right next to each other. So the far left one is the hard drive. Here's the reset switch and it goes just like that. Okay. You're gonna take your power plus and minus just like this and then your power switch goes next to it. Plus and minus is always the easy, the hardest ones to install first. I mean, set last, so it's always best to do those. They go 
next to each other like so. Like that. And then your power switch goes in the two pins right next to it. Just like that. And there you go. All your front panels are connected. So what we're gonna do real quick is we're gonna take this cable over here and this is just, again, I wanna make sure that your, your stuff looks good and zip tie this kind of down. So I'm gonna zip tie right here in the corner just to kind of keep this tight. So, like, so. There we go. Like that. Okay, so now we have those kind of cleaned up, nice and cleaned up. Then you just take your little cable tie cutters, your, sorry, your wire cutters. You end up with like kind of a cleaner looking build. We do stuff like this. There you go. And then my little trick is to kind of twist these around so you can't see the bit of the cable tie. Okay, so now we have all of our front panel connectors plugged in. Front panel connectors plugged in. Everything is ready, kind of clear here. We know that we're going to install our graphics driver. So what you're gonna to have to do here is you're gonna to have to basically remove these and they're kind of push. And so you just kind of push them out like that, twist, and then they come out. Just like that, there's one. Same thing with this one right here. Push from the side, just kind of clipping it and then you kind of Go back and forth with it a couple times. And eventually, you just come right out. There you go. Just like that. There you go. Lines up right with this key. Oh, I put it in the wrong one. I can't. Oh, I can still put this back. No, I can't. So when we tell this to people, just say, don't take that one out. So let's correct that. Let's take this one out. So one word of warning and to just make sure you show them, don't take this one out. You actually want to take the two below it out. If you have an extra one that you, any one of the case fittings, like if you have another case fitting from another case, like which I do, I can fill that in, but that was just a mistake on my part. So, okay, we're going to take this. Again, you're going to want to put it down to the second slot. This is the second and third slot, which is a little bit of a surprise for me. Now, the way this works is it just lines up. There's a little, yeah, so there's a little clip right here. Clip is down, just pushes in just like that. And it's good to go. And you'll hear a nice, satisfying clip once it's in. What you can do now is if you want to, down here at the bottom, you have this extra cabling that you, if you want to clean up, which I'm going to do. I know I made the mistake before of doing that, but take your, take your zip tie. Wrap it around like that. I'm just gonna zip tie that fan cable to the other cable. So keep it nice and clean. Just for the sake of awesomeness, because you have more than enough, they give you lots of these. Install one more. So there you go, you've got that. Now you take these two screws. You have two of these little hexagonal screws. I'll show you these again. Take two of these little hexagonal screws. I'm gonna screw them in over here. This will just secure your card in. And there we go. Graphics card is installed. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna run our two SATA cables, it's two flat ends. And if you look in here, so one goes right here, like so. And then the other one goes right on top of it, like so. Okay, and there's your SATA. You're just gonna shove these down at the back. We'll show you the, and we'll show you the other part of this here in a second. And take this cable like this, and put it like this, right here, like so. Clip right in, so there's that cable. Now this one is interesting. Again, same thing. It's got a little L and there's a little L right here. But this one we're gonna do upside down. Put it in just like that. Now 
Now we're gonna install our power supply. This actually has a power supply bracket. So right here in the back, we're gonna remove these four screws. There's one, there's two, there's three, and number four. Like so, we're gonna take this out like that. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is we're going to want to mount the, basically the bracket onto here. So you're just gonna, this is like so nice with it's black on black on black on black. So clean there. So we're gonna line this like this. Just it, it, there's a little lip on the bottom that kind of holds it down. So you're gonna to wanna to kind of line up this like this. And what I do is I'll take the first screw, put it in right there. it down. Let's kind of clean them all up. And these are all included with your PSU. So your PSU actually came with these four screws. Final screw going in the corner like this. And once you kind of have all four of them in, you're just going to quickly tighten the last ones down like so. Okay. So there, now your bracket's installed. Next step is to get this inside of the case. Ugh. Take this like so, shove it up just like this. Go right up to the edge. You're gonna grab your screws. And this is why having a magnetic screwdriver is always helpful. Since you always wanna be able to grab this like this get that lined up like so. Top screw and screw it in. There we go. And grab your other screws. Like that. And one more here. Like that. And then your last one goes in the corner right over here. And there we go. All of our screws are now in and our PSU is installed. Now, while we're back here, let's just take this real quick. Put this like this. One thing we've learned, ladies and gentlemen, one thing we've learned is uh, you gotta unscrew these. I'm learning things. So sometimes we do this. This is what mistakes, these are how things happen. So you gotta unscrew these screws. No mistakes, just happy accidents. Yeah, just no, yeah, happy accidents. You have to undo these screws. Then from here, then you put this on like so, and then you screw these into these slots like this, which I did not know, but now I do know. There's that one. Again, same thing with this one. Screw it in. Then once you have those in like that, I figured we'd just do all this at the same time and take this and screw that in like that. And now the back is actually ready. Okay, so now let's start to power up the PSU. I mean the, CP, the, the rest of the PC. The best way is because as you can see, these are not the prettiest cables in the world, is there is a, I'm going to shove most of these into the back and only use the ones that I need. So down here, you'll see this giant hole kind of down here and store as many of these cables in the back as I potentially can. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our SATA, two SATA cables. So this is a SATA, and don't be SATA about your SATA. Use that joke so many times, sorry. No, not. I'm not sorry, you're right. So we're gonna take this cable, again, there's a little lip, and because this is right side up, you're just gonna stick it in just like this, right against that lip. Okay, you're gonna take this other one that's right here, and because this one is upside down, show this around this way. Again, you just wanna line up the lip. There you go. Okay, now our hard drive power is completely powered up. We have a, the rest of these, we're actually gonna use CPU extensions, but if you wanted to, this would be, all you do is you run this one, but I'm gonna show you with CPU extensions. If you don't wanna use CPU extensions, it's pretty straightforward, but we're going to use cable extensions to make this look better. But let me show you how to hook these up without cable extensions and then we'll, we'll hook up the cable extensions afterwards. So this cable is your power cable. 
And for this one, we're going to run it down through this hole right here. Roby, they're all power cables. What kind of power cable This is, is a 24-pin ATX cable. So we're going to put that one right down here like this. And then these, see how it says CPU? You need four of these. These actually split in half. So there's actually a little, these actually come apart. So you're going to want to do one of these apart like this. You're going to shove this one right up in here like this. And then I'll show you on the other side what that looks like. There we go. Now, that is all the cables we need. So we're gonna flip this back over and then we'll worry about cleaning this up afterwards. Okay, here's our 24 pin. So again, there's a little clip, there's a little clip on this. You take that little clip and it goes on the outside. So it's just gonna go in right down like so. You're gonna push it on down like that. Then you have another one up here and you see how it's split. I'm just gonna take one of those and flip it over and plug it in right here. Just like that and it'll clip in when it's clipped in. And that's how you would do it without cable extensions. Now we're gonna add cable extensions because it's gonna look so much better. So this is the only other cable I'm gonna show you without the power extensions. And then we'll go to, we'll actually show you the cable extensions. This is actually the cable you need to power your GPU. It says PCIe on it. There's a little hole right here. I'm gonna shove it through here like this. Take this little cable, the PCI three, and remember this splits into three and four. You're gonna take the little three pin, you're gonna shove it in just like, oh, up top, just like that. And there you go. And you're gonna, you could, you could cable tie these together if you wanted to to make it look cleaner, but that's how you're gonna install that without the cable extension. Now, I'm gonna show you what it's gonna look like with the cable extensions. So this is a set of cable combs. These are by Asia Horse. You might be asking these, these cable combs you install on your own. Now, if you wanna know how to install them, basically what you do is you stick your, you basically make sure that you see how your cables plug in, like I checked how they plugged in, and then I chose to put my cable combs on top. So you just basically wanna stick it in and that's how you know how to install your cable combs. So that's just a little neat little thing. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna plug this in like this. So that takes care of my power. I'm gonna shove this through this hole right here, like so. And then I'm gonna take this one, which I've also tested and pre-applied my cable combs. So get like this. And that's gonna go in this little hole down here. And then finally, our last one, which is the CPU one. Again, it splits. I'm gonna take one of these, run it through the top. So it comes in like that. Run it up just like this. You're gonna take it, turn it around, and you're gonna plug it into the cable spot. Just like that. There you go. Now it's all, all of your cables are plugged in. We're gonna turn this over and we're gonna cable manage this mess. Dun, dun, dun. We're gonna take that 24 pin connector that we had right here. Just connect those together like that. And then this is, our, this is to our graphics card. We're gonna take this one, we're gonna take this one. And we're just gonna connect this together. Again, they have lips on them. So just look for the lip like so. There's that. And then finally, there's one here that says CPU. And we just connect those back together like this. Make sure they're all back together. Snaps back together and then you're gonna connect that one in just like this. So then all your cables are now connected. Now, what we wanna do when you think about cable management is you wanna hide as much as you potentially can so none of it shows on the left-hand side. So what we wanna do is really minimize what you can see through the back of the case. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one cable tie, cable tie this together, because at this point in time, the PC is completely hooked up. It is ready to get turned on. You wanna make sure it looks clean, and especially when you wanna make the PC gods happy with you. The cleaner it looks, the happier they are. I'm pretty sure there's something about how clean it looks is how much better it runs. I'm sure there's some sort of efficiency number going on there. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just kind of clumping cables together to just kind of get stuff cleaned up. So I'm gonna take my cable tie ones, I'm gonna do a long, one of these long ones, the cool thing about this case is they give you some super long zip ties. I'm gonna zip tie this together. And again, you wanna keep it nice and out of the, you wanna keep as much out of the, the windows as possible. And the cool thing, like one of the things I love about this case is that there's lots of places to do that. Okay, now finally, these last couple cables that we have like extra up here, kind of shove into like a nice big group like so, 
then we're going to kind of keep them behind the back plate here. So these will go right up here. And again, you don't want to be too thick in terms of your stuff. And you might have to do these in a couple clumps, right? So I'm going to clump up these up here. These are all your extra SATA cables and then give it enough room so it kind of clumps up here like this. Like that. And then the same thing with this one. Again, clumping them kind of together like so. And twist them as best you can. Like that. And then put this together like this. Like this. And now you're getting a nice kind of clean clump here. Take one of your really long cables. around like that and zip tie that together if I did that right and there you go now your PC is nice and clean now again I know just because we have all these extra cables I, I definitely wanted to make sure the front was gonna look better than the back so the back is still pretty clean looking again I'm kind of pushing these down I may want to actually go ahead and do one more zip tie right there. I'll test that out here in a minute. But big thing is, is just want to make sure everything is nice and flat and out of the way. So we're actually going to go ahead and zip tie this one. Taking one more long cable tie. Shove that like that. And then cable tie this bit together. And this is just to hold these last cables down. There you go. Okay. There you go. All of our cables are tied. Nice from the front. There we go. Okay, now we have that like that. When you look at the front, a nice looking clean build. Okay, now we're just going to put our back panels on. Luckily, because Cable Cooler Master gave us a lot of room in the back. Okay. Not too much. You don't need to tighten these too much. Just, like when it just gets a little bit tough, that's you want to stop. And there we go. Our PC is ready to try and turn on. Here we go. Oop. I see a light right there. Where's the power button? <laughs> it's on the oh, that's right. It's on the front. That's right. Posts! It posts! Badoom! And now we're gonna install. Oh, we're gonna install Windows on it. Pretty sounding drive. That's like it's got all sorts of room in the side. Like we can put we can put like a an LED screen. An LED screen. Yeah, there you go. You can so go you for can play your game. On the computer. Yeah. On the computer? The files are on the computer? As you can see, we have actually posted. We are inside of the BIOS. Everything is good. One of the things that uh, now we're going to do is going to show you really quickly how to install operate, how to install an operating system now that you've got your machine set up. Right now you can see that if you're looking in here, you can see we've got a Ryzen 5 1600. Our six core is in there. It's running. Everything's showing up. Our RAM showing 16 gigs. Everything good there. All we're going to do is take this little uh, USB and plug it in right here. So ready to basically install and go and hit save changes and restart. Yes. And then we're going to choose boot options from the boot menu here in a minute. And you hit uh, delete to bring up UEFI, UEFI boot options. So F2 or delete or F11 works as well. Or hit that. Go to boot. And then we're going to choose our Microsoft Windows. Boom. And then we're going to hit 
exit, and then save changes and exit. And then just for the sake, we're gonna to get to the point where we're actually gonna test this. I'm gonna show you how to enable your new drives, but for the sake of testing, because I only chose, uh, I only wanted to see what this was with the 250 gig T-Force. We're gonna test it just with the T-Force. And so that's where we're gonna install the operating system here. We're not gonna put it on the M.2. We're not gonna stick it anywhere else. This is just about making sure that this is tested with the setup that we recommended. I just wanted to show you as part of the setup what are some of the upgrade options in case you want to install those and you had an all up, all up guide on how to set up this PC. So we're gonna hit next, install now. Setup is installing. And just, just to be super clear, this is not a quiet PC. I mean, it's not, it's not, um, I'm gonna say I don't have a product key for the sake of this and I'm gonna install Pro. It's not a quiet PC. There is some noise. Again, you could replace these fans with ML fans, but again, the stock fan that we have here plus the um, stock uh, cooler should be more than enough to basically cool this CPU. So I'm gonna go custom. And then you see I have all of these different options. What I'm gonna do is because I know that I'm installing it on the 250 gig hard drive, this more games is just because I wanted to have games pre-installed, but you're gonna do this 250, 250 gig one here, hit next. And then we're gonna copy Windows. So we're copying Windows now. And again, this is still an SSD, so it should still go relatively quickly, um, which is great. So you're still gonna get really, cop really fast copy speeds. And the install of Windows probably is gonna take maybe 10, 15 minutes tops. Now the games we're gonna test on this is we're gonna run some Apex Legends, and we're going to also test, uh, I believe we'll, uh, we'll throw in some Fortnite. I think those are two easy games to get set up and installed. Um, and we'll, uh, we'll show you what the frame rate is on those because I think those are probably the ones that people are probably most interested in. If there's something else you'd love us to test, maybe in the future, let us know. But for now, in the comments below, but for now, we're just gonna, we're gonna verify things against those two games. Come on, baby. 98, 99, Installing features. Installing updates. This is the moment you've been waiting for. Yeah, we're not even gonna wait. We're gonna restart now. Okay, so our OS is installed. We're gonna go ahead and remove this drive because we do not need it anymore. Boom, there you go. Once we get in and we kind of finish to set up the hard drive, then we'll go back and we'll make sure our RAM is running at 3200. So we're into the, we're in the normal settings now. Here we go. So again, region you're gonna choose is United States. Yes, I'm in the United States. Uh, I'm gonna use a normal US layout. If you wanna add a second layout from your another country or if you wanna get into that, you can. We're gonna skip that for me. For network, uh, I always I always recommend installing Windows with a uh, wired connection, uh, not wireless. I just It's just that much faster, so if you can do that and just plug it in wired, if you don't have an option and you gotta do wireless, but I would always recommend doing Windows with, an, with a internet connection on. So we're just letting it finish its stuff here. I'm gonna set it up for personal use. If you worked, uh, because I'm using Pro, you get this option. If you're running home, you do not get this option. But because I'm running Pro, I'm gonna set it up for personal use. For now, I'm not gonna install an MSA. I'm just gonna do an offline account. If you wanna use a Microsoft account, the settings will be very close to the same in terms of just this last little bit of startup. But I'm gonna hit offline account. If you want to have this sync across all of your stuff, this is just telling you what you get. If you use a Microsoft account, I'm gonna do limited experience. And then for here, I'm just gonna call it Robitech. There we go. And then I'm gonna hit next. And then I'm not gonna put in a password just for the sake of us being able to do pictures. Now, device, do more across device history. This is just letting you know that if you wanted to have your Windows features sync across like on your phone or anything like that, you have the option of doing that. It's just telling you more about that. I'm gonna hit no for now. And then this is if you wanna use Cortana, it's up to you. Um, I never use voice assistances, voice assistants with my computer, with my PC. I don't really talk to my PC. If you wanted to have that option, she, she does. I mean, she's integrated with Bing, which is great. I'm just not going to use it, decline. Now this stuff here, this is basically things that are privacy settings for your PC. Uh, if you want to do so, use your voice and dictation. This is like telling you that it sends voice data to basically make it better. This is, lets you know if you need to find your device. If you don't know where you placed your PC, then you have that option. Inking and typing, this is just basically, again, this is, everything here is about trying to make things better from Microsoft. Uh, the ones I have tendency to keep is the diagnostic data. I keep that at full. I, and then I turn everything else off because frankly, they don't need it. But the one that I do care about is any diagnostic, da diagnostic data is good for them to have. So hit accept there. And then we are set up. Windows is coming in.
Okay, so let me just show you the quick things that I do to set up for running Windows. As you can see, we have a couple things that no speaker or headphones are plugged in, great. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do is I am one of those old school people who always puts the recycle bin in the bottom right because I care. And I delete this because I don't need it. So clear out my desktop, I'm just, I'm just simple like that. Let's activate our hard drives. If you added more hard drives, you wanna hit Create and Format Hard Disk Partitions. You go from here and you'd see the other drives that I have installed because I've already done the more games one that's already showing up here. But if I wanted to create this one, this is that physical drive I put in there. I'm gonna hit next, assign a drive letter. I'm gonna call this one media and hit next, hit finished. So now if you go and you hit the Windows E key, you'll actually see I've got my more games, my media, and I'm, I have a tendency to name this one operating system just so I know that Windows is here. If you are only if you're following the recommended $500 build, then you're only gonna have this Windows drive. And remember, you just you don't have a ton of room, but you're, we're gonna run, for the sake of this, we're gonna just run things off of Windows. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and install our NVIDIA drive. Now this is up, this is up to you. I do use uh, GeForce Experience, so we're gonna install GeForce Experience real quick. And this just allows me to obviously keep your, your drives up to date um, let me tell you, why do you want to keep your drives up, your drivers up to date when you run NVIDIA GeForce Experience is that if you're doing things like OBS, you're streaming, a lot of those things require you to have the most up-to-date drivers. Using GeForce Experience is just a super fast way for NVIDIA to let you know that there are updated drivers for you. The other thing I would res recommend as well while we're waiting for that to install, if you look for Drive Booster Pro 7, this is an all-up. Drive ma Drive Manager, you can see Drive Booster 7 Pro, it's at www.iobit. I'll put a link to this in the description below. I would definitely recommend doing this. This is a paid service. No, I'm not sponsored by them. This is what I use. It manages all my drivers and keeps them up to date. So we're going to uh, get rid of that and we're going to finish our install of GeForce Experience and get our latest NVIDIA driver. Now, while you're doing that, I'm not gonna show this up on here, is go to Start, Settings, Go to update and security and make sure that you run all your updates. I would definitely recommend updating Windows all the time, making sure it's up to date um, and then taking the updates um, as they come in. Again, we have a lot of security things that have a tendency to go through here making sure your drivers are up to date and automatically installing them makes a lot of sense. So that's my recommendation there. So we're gonna create and install here. So we've got Windows installed, but one of the things is now that we're getting ready to play any games, we wanna make sure that we get our RAM set to 3200 megahertz. So here we are inside the BIOS. What you're gonna do is as soon as you restart the PC, make sure you hit delete in the case for this one. Go to OC Tweaker here at the top. You'll see this load XMP settings. Change it to XMP Profile 2. It's saying it's shedding all your settings. There, you can see it's actually going to 3200, all that kind of jazz. You see your DRAM voltage change. Go to exit, save changes, exit. Boom, you're ready to go. So again, we're playing right now, we're playing, uh, we were playing uh, Apex Legends. This is capped at 60 right now, uh, just given with some of the limitations of the monitor. I'm not playing at a high frame rate monitor, but you're seeing right now I'm playing easily at 60 frames per second. Actually, I could have set the, I could have set the resolution higher if I wanted to, but yeah, not having any issues whatsoever running this at 60. Oh, we got a guy right there. Let's go see if we can kill him. If I kill somebody on this, then this person's terrible. And I'm okay with it. Oh, I'm, I don't, oh, I'm down. That's okay, kill me, kill me. But there we go. It's a cool 60 frames per second, no problem. We played this, this has been a little of our game, but no issue there. Again, I'm okay with, oh, I might get, I might actually get picked up. Uh, nope, he's going in there, but again, working really, really well. And we're still staying at a nice solid 60. You could totally modify your settings to get this to even better if you wanted to. Um, this was setting it with almost everything maxed out and it was sitting at 60, running at no issue whatsoever. So let's leave this and let's take a look at Fortnite. Now, let me be super clear about something. I haven't played Fortnite in a really long time, but again, this is just one of those games that it makes a lot of sense for Stop people. Stop with the excuses and play the game. Okay, I'm, I'm joining the server right now. Average frames there, there we go. Again, I only have a 60 FPS monitor, so it makes it a little bit hard. We're getting a solid 60 FPS here. We haven't played anything yet, but oh, let's go take some stuff down. Oh, let's see what happens when I take down this tree. Ooh, bus launching. There we go. And all in all, like we're sitting, it's like, again, super constant FPS. Let's see what our settings are real quick and see what it's set. It's running 1920 by 1080, brightness, graphics is auto set. Look at that, all epic. It's like all, everything's on. So yeah, we're gonna jump now. <laughs> we're gonna get, 
We're just gonna get spicy, ladies and gentlemen. Ooh, we got a nice little dip there to 60. But again, if you wanted to get greater than 60 FPS, you could d totally change your settings. This is setting everything to high, which uh, was the auto detection. But this is not set for eSport. If you wanted to set it for eSport settings, which is just basically meaning you're gonna get the ideal settings for your for your game, uh, you could totally do that. We're gonna drop spicy and try and get something here. Um, I'm probably already dead because I should have already been on the ground. We're gonna get into this into this building. I'm gonna get killed like right away. It's gonna be awesome. Now, if you want to look oh, like a pro, remember you have to keep switching between your weapon and. Oh! Oh! What was what? that? What? what was that? Give me your stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. That is a scary. Oh god, I'm out of weapon. Oh, this is not good. Uh, let's get this. Here we go. Two. There we go. Now we're good. Where'd you go? Oh God, we're out of. Uh, oh no! Take him shield. Oh God! Oh God! Oh! <laughs> but I still killed somebody. This is just that. We're just gonna drop it spicy again. We're just hitting at a nice 60 FPS, and we're good to go there. Oh man, man, this was a long episode. We are talking about. We have been doing this for now. What? Coming up on four and a half, five hours, guys. I have to say, I was impressed with this $500 build, like I knew that it would run things at high frame rates. It's more than capable of doing it, especially with adjusting settings. But I mean, you were seeing a solid 60 FPS easily with Apex and with Fortnite with settings um, set to the default settings with no issues whatsoever. I mean, we had MSAA at 16, which is crazy, you know, for only 500 bucks. And then, you know, for an extra 20, 30 bucks that I made it to look good, I was, Building in this case, all in all, it went together very easily. It was a very easy build. And then again, you saw some of the expandability we could do. But I wanna give this some closing thoughts. Number one, look, if you can spend $100 more and you wanted to just get that extra, extra bit of power, I would recommend spending $100 and going from a 60, 50, 1650 Super to a 1660 Super. It's just a little bit more, but the pairing between that card and this OS is just gonna make it that much cleaner and you're gonna sacrifice just that little bit less, specifically for super high frame rate gaming. If you really wanna speed up your load times, you could spend another 100 bucks instead of just doing the 250 gig SSD. Um, you could spend an extra 75 bucks and do a one terabyte M.2 drive, like kind of what I threw in here. You're gonna speed up your load times and at the same time, you're also gonna up your overall hard drive space. Again, you always have that $15 and going to that um, one terabyte SSHD, but again, you're gonna sacrifice load times overall and the speed is gonna be much slower. Now, if you start creeping higher than that, then I would look at my $1,000 build. My $1,000 build, you can actually check that entire build and the parts list right here because at that point in time, it's better to look at things like going to X570, like just a 1660 and some other things like that because you get much more upgrade ability when you start looking at some of the parts there. You can check the links in the description below for all of the parts, including the Amazon links, which I've added just given that these things have started to go out of stock. I like to think that we're taking credit for it because everybody who's loving our $500 build, but I'm not entirely sure that's what's happening. Well guys, that is it for Robitech today. Let us know what you thought about today's episode in the comments below. What did you think about the build today? Was there anything that wasn't clear? Was there stuff that you felt like we were lacking on? Are you gonna build this PC? We'd love to know. Tell us about it. And what did you think about the performance? Were you surprised by what you saw? I know a couple of people had said, is this actually gonna run things pretty well? And you can see, it actually uh, was it churning through games quite handedly. Now let us know about all of that in the comment below. Now, while you're down there, be sure to slap that subscribe button, whip that like button, and ring that notification bell so you get a notification each and every time we post a new video. Also, head on over to Mixer.com slash Robitech and get us a follow over there for our live show every Wednesday from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Pacific time. We also now stream simultaneously stream here on YouTube, so you can tune in right here as well over at YouTube.com slash Robitech. In fact, you can check out our last week's episode right here. Also, be sure to drop us a follow over on Twitter and Instagram at Robitech. And check us out over on Facebook.com slash Robitech along with your parents. We love to hang out and snuggle. Finally, if you want to hang out with a bunch of like-minded techies, have questions about builds, or want to get something technical help or suggestions, check the description below for the Discord link for Robitech. You guys, it's a great and active community just waiting for you to be a part of it. Now, thank you so much for watching, guys. Now, you can go build this PC as well. Or just rewind this video and watch it over and over again to watch my shining face tell you all about the tech. Talk to you guys later. Hashtag beefy course.